Good morning, friends, and welcome to the Sunday morning message from the First Baptist Church of Winsboro, South Carolina. I'm Dr. Craig Bailey. I'm Pastor Craig here, and we are glad that you decided to join us for just a few minutes this morning. Now, this is Father's Day 2022, June 19th. So today at church, we'll be celebrating Father's Day with our dads, but also, secondly, we're celebrating the fact that we just finished a week of vacation Bible school, and what a time we had with our boys and girls. It was just wonderful. And uh, as we looked at how much we learned and how we walked with Moses through the wilderness, uh, it, it was just a fantastic time. Together, we just picked up on so much good teaching this past week and had a lot of fun while we were doing it. So thanks to everybody that pulled this off, to our director, Nancy Smith, and uh, all the others that helped out this week. We appreciate you and your hard work. It's going to make a difference in the lives of kids. And if uh, if you can grasp how much of a difference it will make, just in whatever church you're in sometime, ask the question of your adults. How many of you came to know Christ, maybe made your first commitment to Christ, you were saved at vacation Bible school and ask folks to raise their hands? You'll be amazed how many shoot up because it is still one of the greatest events we do in churches all year long. Well, today we are in Hebrews chapter 4, and in Hebrews 4, there's a beautiful picture that I want you to see that we'll entitle, Grace in Your Time of Need, with this message. Now, there are parts of this particular passage I'm not dealing with today because it's going to be a part of a bigger message later on, so don't accuse me of skipping over things. I'm just putting them together in a different way. But today's message is all about this subject. How do you find grace in your time of need? I've got five points for you today that come from Hebrews chapter 4, beginning in verse number 12. Because as crazy as the world is today, what we really need is to know that God is with us through it all. We need to know God's with us while we're filling up the gas tank. We're walking through the grocery store and looking at the mixture of higher prices and empty shelves while we are uh, dealing with our bosses at work on all the changes that seem to be coming our way, while we're dealing with what's going on at school with our kids and some of the lunacy that seems to be just bouncing around our society today, uh, which if you think it's strange and it's weird, it is, my friends, but... What's amazing is the Word of God told us it would be this way. So listen, friends, as we get into this particular question, uh, what is it we're looking for? We're looking for what's at the very end of the passage we'll be dealing with today. And that is from Hebrews 4.16, where he says we're, we want to be able to do something so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in the time of need. So I don't know what your need is today or needs, but there's a way to deal with those needs. And you can find grace and mercy to help you when you follow some very simple processes that are laid out for you in the Word of God. We're going to look at one of those today. And we're going to begin by saying, if you really want to find grace in your time of need, the first thing you've got to do, number one, is access the power of the Word of God. Access the power of the Word of God. Look at verse 12. It says, for the word of God is living and effective and sharper than any double-edged sword, penetrating as far as the separation of soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Well, you see, this word is powerful. It is real. It is genuine. That's why it is coming under such renewed attack by those on the far left in our own country. And I don't know what country you're in where you're living, but there are probably some people, and they may come from an entirely different viewpoint, but there are those in your country that are also attacking the Word of God. They hate this book. They do not want you to read it. They do not want it shared. They do not want the kids in school to have access to it. And they will get downright violent in some cases to keep you from spreading it. What are they afraid of? It's just a book, right? I mean, that's what they would say. But the fact is, the Bible says it's much more than a book. It is the Word of God. Perhaps that's why those people are so angry and adamant against it. But friends, the real power for you is knowing this Word. 
The psalmist said, your word I have hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. So the secret to overcoming sin is knowing the word. It talks about in the Old Testament how the very secret to your own success in life is knowing the word of God, that you will have a great deal of I, I, let's change the word success, even prosperity. I don't want to preach a prosperity gospel, but a lot of whether you're going to be able to be successful in life or not, is going to depend on how you follow the principles of this word, whether you're able to fulfill your potential or not. In Psalm 119, which is all about the word of God, by the way, the longest chapter in the entire Bible is focused on nothing but the word of God and how important it is in your life. If you really want to get down to how important the word is, I suggest you take an evening where you do nothing else. You cut the TV off, you cut the ringer off on the phone, get a good cup of coffee and sit down with Psalm 119 and begin to ingest each one of those verses individually because they're all little sermons about the power of the word of God in your life. And that's why it's so important that we recognize the ability of the Word of God to influence us, to help us, and direct us, especially when we're on a path, when we're confused, we don't know which way to go. It'll give you those basic truths that'll see you through, and it'll give you those deeper prophetic directions that you need to understand the times and the seasons that are going on around us. So friends, access the power of of the word and never apologize for it. Never have a day in your life where you don't spend some time in it. Begin to meditate upon it, memorize it, and apply it to your life. Secondly, realize the perception of God. If you really want to access God's grace in your time of need, you've got to know something about him. Look at verse 13. No creature is hidden from him. And the him in this case is from God. All right. No creature is hidden from him, but all things are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. Now grasp what this verse is saying. You may be able to keep some secrets from your friends, keep secrets from your parents, your teachers. You might even be able to keep some secrets from your spouse. You may even be trying to fool yourself (laughs) with keeping some things away, you know, not, not really acknowledging truths that are right there in front of you about yourself, staring yourself in the mirror and lying about yourself at the same time. Listen, friends, you may think you can hide things from a lot of people, hide things from your employer, but I've got news for you, friends. I, I, look, I may be your pastor. You may be able to hide so much from me. And I have to be, to some degree, a little bit gullible in that regard because I know something's not right in your life, but I just sometimes don't want to back you up in the corner and put my finger in your face. But friends, there's one to whom you have no protection. There is no shield to hide behind. There is no closet you can get into that he can't peer through the door. There is no way to hide from the Holy Spirit. This particular verse is just reminding us of that. He says of God, all things are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. So when God puts his finger on a thought that you have, a direction that your mind is heading that is evil, that's not good, even though you've not expressed it to anyone else, recognize That's the work of the Holy Spirit who knows everything about you and me. And it's from that that we can recognize not only can we not put on a show for God, but he knows who we really are. He knows who we are behind the facade. You might be able to put on a masquerade for other people. You can't do that for God. So he knows the real issue. Not the one that, uh, oh, you know, you're going to see your therapist, your psychologist, or your pastor, or somebody else. And when they ask the tough questions, you blow up a smoke screen. You try to shift blame. You try to push things somewhere else. You don't give the right answer or the real answer. Friends, you can't do that with God. He already knows. 
So realize the perception of God in your life. He already knows what's going on. But thirdly, you've got to now hold on to the faith that you profess. And I say profess because, you know, for many of us, the faith is there and what we profess may not be what we possess. Make sure that what you're professing is also what you're possessing. Look at verse number 14. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. You see, it's because of what Jesus did for us that we have this confession in the first place. A confession of faith in the one who came to give his life for us, who surrendered and sacrificed his own precious blood that we might be saved. Well, this is something you need to hang on to. And in these days, it's more evident why than ever before. Because people are attacking your faith. People are making fun of you for even having it. People are trying to to push you to find solutions and answers in other places apart from God and his word. They're saying that the answers you found there are wrong. Let me enlighten you about what's real in these days. And they'll point you to all kinds of vain philosophies of men that have no real answers. Matter of fact, they will drag you down a path and lead you astray. So it's never been more important than right now for you to hold on to the faith that you profess. But then, then fourthly, remember the purpose of your priest. Why did Jesus come? Look at verse 15. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in every way as we are, yet without sin. Now, some of you are saying, oh, but we have sins today, temptations today that Jesus didn't have in his day. Friend, nothing has really changed. All temptation has the same basis. It's the basis of declaring that you are in charge and not God, of choosing a way other than his. The very same questions, the very same issues have always been built around that, whether you're going to listen to the voice of Satan as Satan tried to even tempt Jesus. (laughs) Turn these these stones into bread, Jesus. You're hungry, aren't you? You could do that. Listen, uh, let's just jump off the pinnacle of the temple here. The, the angels will catch you. You do know that, right? I mean, the way in which Satan subtly tempts us has not changed. It's been the same through the generations. So recognize something here. The purpose of our priest was, yes, to come and provide the sacrifice, but he came to do something else as well. He came to experience humanity all of it, and in its ugliest possible form. You feel sorry for yourself about the things that have been going on in your life, your suffering, your pain, uh, the injustices that have been thrown your way. Is there anyone that can relate to that? Look at the Lord Jesus Christ, who lived a sinless life and then was unjustly arrested, accused, lied about, then put through every possible torture and a death that is designed to make you feel the maximum pain the human body can feel without going into unconsciousness. All of this when he didn't deserve it. On top of that, a pain you and I can't understand or ever feel, the pain of having someone else's sins dumped upon us and having to pay for them. That's what the atonement is all about as Jesus hung on the cross for us and for our sins. Oh, listen, friends, you can't shake your fist in the face of Jesus and say, you don't know how I feel. No, it's just the opposite. Jesus would look at you and say, oh, my child, I've had more feelings than you can imagine. And on top of that, because I created you and I know what you're going through, all of humanity, and I took all of those sins to the cross, I know how everybody feels down to the depths and I hurt right down there with you. You see, part of the purpose of our priest coming was, yes, to lay down his life for our sins, but also to feel and experience all of those so that he could do what this verse says, able to sympathize with our weaknesses. 
He walked around in this veil of human flesh. Remember, he wasn't just God. He was man. He was the God-man. And when the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, he experienced all of those things. So Jesus knows how you feel, my friends. So when you are hurting, when you are in pain, you can do what our fifth point tells you to do. You can pray with bold confidence. Now, let me go over these quickly with you. First, we said access the power of the Word of God. Secondly, realize the perception of God, God the Father. Thirdly, hold on to the faith that you pros- that you profess, and I hope you possess. And then fourthly, remember the purpose of your priest, Jesus Christ, so that you can fifthly pray with bold confidence. That's verse 16. Look at it with me. Therefore, let us approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. Now, I know we should be more spiritual than this, but yes, we have needs and we feel those needs. We feel the concern over things. I mean, if you're my age and you're, you're looking toward that retirement decision, and then you're saying all of a sudden, wow, my retirement account just lost 25% of its value in one quarter. How am I going to retire now? Oh, that little house that we were going to buy when we retired is almost doubled in price over the past two years. Oh boy, how's that going to work for you? You know, there are concerns. Do you think that God says, I don't care? Just get over it, dude. No, we all have needs. You may have health needs. You've got that big doctor's appointment coming up this week. You've got financial needs. You've got needs that are based on what's going on in your family because you're watching it. what's, happen- what's happening with your children and your grandchildren or your great-grandchildren. You've got needs. We've got needs. It's not unspiritual to say, Lord, I do need this. No, he's not going to slap you around and say, what are you talking about? get over it. No, he sympathizes with us and he understands. So when we pray, we can pray with this bold confidence, it says. Praying with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Oh, listen, if it's just a whim, if it's just something that's really not a need, the Lord will let you know that too. But for what you do really need, where else are you going to go? Are you going to try to fulfill that with the world and all its fakery? Oh, no, friends, you're going to go to God. And as you go to him, praying in the name of Jesus, coming boldly before the throne of grace, you will find the help that you need. So, friends, I don't care where you are today. If you're in a hospital room, you're sitting in the funeral parlor, you're just over in your neighborhood wondering how you're going to get to work this week and be able to afford the gas to get there, much less be able to stretch your paycheck for other things. Now, I don't care what your need is. Take it to the Lord. Tell him about it. Talk to him about it. He'd love to have a conversation with you. And when I say a conversation with you, Listen, when it talks about praying this way, it doesn't mean that you just say with boldness, okay, God, here's my list. Do something about this. And you rattle off the list. Here's all the things I need. And I'm in pain. This is terrible now. And you wad it up and throw it at him and say, now, God, do something about this. Bye. <laughs> and you run off. If you're really praying before the Lord, I want you to remember a key principle that hit me years and years ago as I was just starting in ministry. Praying is as much about listening as talking, maybe even more so. Glenn Shepard taught me this principle, and a principle in which, you know, I think our parents sometimes taught us to pray the wrong way. You know, the now I lay me down to sleep prayer or something. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's, let's get down and pray before we go to bed. Pray real quick, bless mom and dad and cheer and everybody. Amen. Okay, now go to sleep. Is that what prayer is really all about? No, the most powerful prayers are when you begin with the Word of God, pray through the Word of God, then 
Let God know what you need, what you feel, what you're going through, and then you spend time in quiet meditation and listening to the Holy Spirit as you digest his word to see what he is going to say to you. When you come boldly before the throne of grace, God will begin to answer. And if he's not answering immediately during your prayer time, and he may just be saying, trust me. And that was the theme of our VBS this week. It was all about, we learned five distinct principles at the end of each one of those, so we can trust God, trust God, trust God. That's, that's my friend, exactly what God wants you to be able to do. After you've poured your heart out, now you've listened through the word and you've meditated on what God is trying to teach you and you're trying to learn the lessons, the spiritual lessons are going to get you through life, then you trust him. He may be answering immediately when you pray or he may not be answering for years. The key is, are you willing to trust him? Are you willing to if you have to wander in the wilderness for a while waiting for the answer, oh my friends, listen, God wants to answer you. He wants to bless you, direct you, and he wants to take those needs and turn them into a source of connection with him so that your relationship with God will be stronger. You can pray with bold confidence. And when you do, and you walk in that trust that you should have when you get up off your knees, then you're going to see God answering those prayers. You'll see those God moments in your everyday life. You will see him working, his Holy Spirit moving barriers out of your way. You may see him putting barriers in your way to direct you because he wants you to go, go another way. Oh, listen, friends, it makes all the difference in the world when you understand this process and how it works. Will you find grace in your time of need? You will if you access the power of the Word of God, first and foremost. Realize the perception of God. He already knows all of your needs and knows even before you ask. Thirdly, hold on to that faith that you profess. Stand firmly in it. Remember the purpose of your priest. He sympathizes with you. The Lord Jesus has felt what we're feeling. He understands. So finally, you can pray boldly with confidence before the throne of grace, expecting God to answer, expecting God to work, because the principle is, is plain. Jesus said this himself. He said, why don't you let your heavenly Father know what you need? What do you think he's going to do? He loves you. You think if you ask for a fish, he's going to give you a snake? You know, <laughs> you, know you ask for a piece of bread, he's going to give you a rock? Is, is that what God's going to do? No, my child. Our Heavenly Father loves us, and when He answers, He gives the right answer and at the right time, as long as we are willing to trust Him. Can you trust Him today? God bless you. I hope so. I'll see you right here tomorrow as we wake up in the Word each and every day, and then on Saturdays as we deal with another biblical perspective. Hey, I Appreciate you coming on board, whether you're one of our members that just can't get out to church and watches the sermon on Sunday, or whether you live somewhere else and you tune in just to check out what's being said in the Word of God today. Thank you for being a part of this family. If you would like it, share it, subscribe to it so that we can keep on sharing the Word till Jesus comes. God bless you.